Kaito grows tomatoes in two separate fields. When the tomatoes are ready to be picked, he is curious as to whether the sizes of his tomato plants differ between the two fields. He takes a random sample of plants from each field and, measure the, and measures the heights of the plants. Here is a summary of the results. So what I want you to do is pause this video and conduct a two sample t-test here. And let's assume that all of the conditions for inference are met, the random condition, the normal condition, and the independence condition. And let's assume that we are working with a significance level of 0.05. So can pause the video and conduct the two sample t-test here to see whether there's evidence that the sizes of tomato plants differ between the fields. All right, now let's work through this together. So like always, let's first construct our null hypothesis. And that's going to be the situation where there is no difference between the mean sizes. So that would be that the mean size in field A is equal to the mean size in field B. Now what about our alternative hypothesis? Well, he wants to see whether the sizes of his tomato plants differ between the two fields. He's not saying whether A is bigger than B or whether B is bigger than A. And so his alternative hypothesis would be around his suspicion that the mean of A is not equal to the mean of B, that they differ. And to do this two sample t test now, we assume the null hypothesis, we assume our null hypothesis, and remember, we're assuming that all of our conditions for inference are met. And then we want to calculate a t-statistic based on this sample data that we have. And our t-statistic is going to be equal to the differences between the sample means, all of that over our estimate of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the difference of the sample means. This will be the sample standard deviation from sample A squared, over the sample size from A, plus the sample standard deviation from the B sample squared over the sample size from B. And let's see, we have all the numbers here to calculate it. This numerator is going to be equal to 1.3 minus 1.6, 1.3 minus 1.6, all of that over the square root of Let's see, the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation from the sample from field A is 0.5. If you square that, you're going to get 0.25. And then that's going to be over the sample size from field A, over 22, plus 0.3 squared. So that is 0.3 squared is 0.09 all of that over the sample size from field B, all of that over 24. The numerator is just going to be negative 0.3, negative 0.3 divided by the square root of 0.25 divided by 22 plus 0 0.09 divided by 24, and that gets us negative 2.44, approximately negative 2.44. And so if you think about a t distribution, and we'll use our calculator to figure out this probability. So this is a t distribution right over here. This would be the assumed mean of our t distribution. And so we got a result that is negative, we got a t statistic of negative 2.44. So we're right over here. So this is, negative 2.44. And so we want to say, what is the probability from this t distribution of getting something at least this extreme? So it would be this area, and it would also be, and it would also be this area. If we got 2.44 above the mean, it would also be this area. And so what I could do is, I'm going to use my calculator to figure out this probability right over here, and then I'm just going to multiply that by two to get this one as well. So the probability, of getting a t value, I guess I could say where its absolute value is greater than or equal to 2.44 is going to be approximately equal to, I'm going to go to second distribution, I'm going to go to the cumulative distribution function for our t distribution, click that, 
And since I want to think about this tail probability here, and then I'm just going to multiply by 2. The lower bound is a very, very, very negative number. You could view that as functionally negative infinity. The upper bound is negative 2.44. Negative 2.44. And now what's our degrees of freedom? Well, if we take the conservative approach, it'll be the smaller of the two samples minus 1. Well, the smaller of the two samples is 22. And so 22 minus 1 is 21. So put 21 in there. 2, 21. And now I can paste. And I get that number right over there. And if I multiply that by 2, because this just gives me the probability of getting something lower than that. But I also want to think about the probability of getting something 2.44 or more above the mean of our t distribution. So times 2 is going to be equal to approximately 0.024. So approximately 0.024. And what I want to do then is compare this to my significance level. And you can see very clearly, this right over here, this is equal to our p-value. Our p-value in this situation, our p-value in this situation is clearly less than our significance level. And because of that, we said, hey, assuming the null hypothesis is true, we got something that's a pretty low probability below our threshold. So we are going to reject, reject our null hypothesis, which tells us that there is, so this suggests, this suggests the alternative hypothesis, that there is indeed a difference between the sizes of the tomato plants in the two fields.